Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey. Work smarter where you want. This is learning at its most fun. Good morning or good afternoon to some. Thank you for joining us today for another Best Practice Partner webinar. My name is Austin Johnson. I am a trainer here at Red Tail Technology. Today, I've invited my friend Colin to come talk about his product, Red Capture, and how he can help, oops, he can help you with the remote client onboarding experience with using Red Capture. So Colin, go ahead and take it away. Hey, good morning, Austin. Thank you very much for having me in the Red Tail, for having us. And thanks everybody for taking some time out of your busy day. Um, my name is Colin Heafy. My, my partner and I developed Red Capture. I'll give you a little background. We are um, planners like all you. Um, we have our own RA with Schwab and we have a relationship with a BD. So we're very similar to many of you, you folks out there. So that one of the biggest reasons we created this Red Capture was, you know, we're heavily involved with the technology and we use Red, Red Tail for all of our, you know, uh, imaging, database, and email. So we wanted to develop a, a program to help us um, save time for us and our staff so we could focus on higher level projects and business, more revenue driven criteria. Uh, we had several offices throughout the country. We have home offices and we, wanted to continually seamlessly uh, maintain our business practices. We've done this for this, you know, two years now is Red Capture. And it kind of plays into the current environment where it's remote with the social distancing. We didn't want to create a new database. We wanted to use existing database because we have, you know, as you all know, we have a lot of databases in our, in our world. And I, we didn't, nothing really existed that didn't have its own standalone database next to Red Tail. We didn't want that. So that's kind of how we created Red Capture. Um, we worked with developer partners, and after a lot of hard work, we came up with Red Capture, and it ties directly into Red Tail's database. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Red Capture creates a professional presentation for client onboarding. It's one of the first introductions your clients will have to yourself and your firm. And you know, Red, because Red Capture works with the existing database at a really you know affordable price. It frees up a lot of time for yourself and your admin. The current offer we're providing, I'll tell you up front in case um, somebody has to jump off the call, is from you know from now till the end of 2020, the services are free. The cost for Red Capture is nine dollars a month for individuals and for corporate accounts that have more than five people, six dollars per person. Okay, so. We're going to uh, get into the nuts and bolts of how this works. It's very simple. So everybody gets their own link when they sign up, and it's based off your user ID and password from Redtail. So you, your existing user ID and password, that's the same user ID and password that Red Capture uses because it feeds directly into Redtail. So your client will get an invite either through you send them an email or if they're in your office, they can click on, you know, when those days come back where people come to the office, they can click on your iPad a link or your desktop. And that's what it looks like. And you can put your logo in here as well. It's, it's privatized. You know, you do that. You're the driver of this. Okay. So I'll just show you how it looks. It's very simple. You say, let's go. And then you'll, you'll put in a, your phone number because that's what it's a mobile number and you'll get a text verification. So I'd have to do this myself to get it. The mobile number is identifier. So I put myself in this earlier so that this database, so that you can see what it looks like. But if they don't have an existing contact, it would be the same thing. They would just be all information would be blank. If they're existing contact, their data comes up pre-populated, whatever is in the database of Redtail. You control what they put in, what they don't put in, what's mandatory and what's not mandatory. Okay, so this is information I put in previous to this phone call. If, if they weren't an existing relationship or contact, there would be blank, the data would be blank. The data is triggered by the mobile number. So the mobile number goes into Redtail and seamlessly picks up this data that was put in there before. And if I want to update it, I can. But this is just the basic information that Redtail fields. These are all Redtail fields, okay? So client fills all this information out, very simple. I'll just go through it quickly because it's all basic data. It just frees up 
your staff or yourself from doing this with a client. Some of the stuff you know you can make mandatory or not. Some of it's not mandatory. You select that, okay? I just left the blank basic stuff so you can see that you can add dependents here, date of births. I'm going to change something. Just I put myself as an actor. I'm not. I'll just put RIA firm, and I'm going to go over here simultaneously and pull myself up so you can see what it looks like. It says actor. Again, that's typically it's mandatory. I left it not mandatory just for time. People can put the social security number in, annual income, net worth. If they can add their bank accounts, you choose if you want them to do that. If if you want them to do it and they don't do it, it won't proceed. They couldn't. They can add it. Okay. Time horizon, investments, short term. There's a lot of other information that you could add this, okay? Now I'm done it's saying thank you. An email that went to my email at the same time saying to myself that a client updated their data, okay? So now if I refresh this, it's updated instantly like the RA firm. Any other data would have been updated as well. Um, let me go to contacts, a fuller screen here so I can show you. It's under notes as well any changes so it's saved under their notes that they made changes so that was, you know today 1007 what was up and this was I did this before it was updated before so this is the, the, any changes job title RA firm so this saves in the notes any changes the client makes to, to the, the data very simple to use looks pretty presentable going forward to the clients. Uh, a couple of the best practices that we've seen people use and I use, um, the couple of key things. The, the ID is for red capture is the same as red tail. So if you change your red tail, user ID, you got to change your red capture user ID when you log into your database management. There's not a lot of reasons once you set the thing up to actually log into red capture unless you want to change something or update your credit card or any of that stuff. But other than that, it does keep a record of who added who, who did update their data um, by the day, month, and year. But other than that, there's not a lot of reasons to log into Red Capture. Your link is your link that's assigned to you is based off your Redtail database credentials. It does not change. So when you send it out to a couple, a husband, a wife, or whomever, you just ask them to each complete their own. It will get more data into the database of Redtail. You can copy the link to to your desktop or your iPad, or you can also put it in your signature of your emails. So when you have it hard coded in there, if you need somebody to update their data or if it's a new relationship, you can ask them to complete the data before they come in to see you or before you talk. I just had somebody do that Friday. They call they cold call, called, believe it or not, my office. I didn't really know who they were. And I looked at it, they updated it today. They're a police officer in my, in my town. I had no idea who the person was until I actually looked at their data. So they'll come in in a couple of days and we'll go over everything. I went over the cost, um, $9 up to five users. Five users or more goes to $6. If you have a corporate plan, or, you know, a, a bigger group. Um, if you're an assist, if you have an assistant that uses your same database, you don't each need to sign up. You, she could just use your link and send it out because it'll just go into your database. It's very simple to sign up. You just go onto the redcapture.com website and put all your information with a credit card. You're not going to be charged until January 2021. And if you can cancel at any time if you don't like it. Um, went through the overview of what the client sees. You saw the data went instantly into the Redtail database. And I, you know, my, my, and my partner's whole issue with any of the other options out there, it was a whole other database we needed to manage. There are other solutions, but none of them that doesn't create another database. And so for us, that's not what we wanted to have happen. So that's my overview, very simple, very easy product to use, looks good for clients, it's professional. And I, you know, I guess also if anybody has any specific question, I'd be happy to talk to them. For sure, thanks Colin. All right, everybody. So uh, just like Colin requested, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and direct your attention to the Q&A box that's equipped in the Zoom meeting. We'll be covering questions shortly. Um, I see some are coming into the chat feature. 
be sure to enter those into the QA. Uh, we need to use the QA to answer the questions live. So if you've entered questions into the chat, please move them over into the QA and we will answer the questions there. Uh, before we go, just wanted to direct your attention. If you want more information about Red Capture, or maybe you're interested in signing up based off of what you saw today, feel free to visit redcapture.com. Like Colin mentioned, you can go there and sign up for a free trial. And by participating in today's webinar, that free trial will be extended to you until the end of 2020. So it's a free product, right? How many times do you get to join a partner webinar and get something free out of it? Uh, definitely go and join Red Capture and take advantage of this great product until the end of 2020. All right. Also, one, yes. other, one other thing, um, many broker dealers use it, many different firms. So if anybody has any specific questions about if their firm approved us, because we went through a lot of the due diligence already, mm -hmm. you know, just shoot me an email at the redcapture.com and I'll, I'll respond to it because many of the firms we've already, were on their platform. Yeah. Yep. I see that question coming in there too. Questions about LPL, for example. Uh, do you, are you guys approved? So if you are approved by broker yeah. dealers, go ahead and give Colin that question and he can let you know for sure whether or not uh, you'll be safe to use that with your broker dealer. And of course, all the information to contact him is available at www.redcapture.com. All right. Yeah, so any of those questions, Austin, I'll, I'll do offline and I'll send respond back via email. Okay. Most everybody's, nobody said they won't use it, so. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Okay, so let's jump into the Q&A then, Colin. So the first question comes from Dallas, and he says, uh, you know, how often do you send this to clients? Can you speak okay. to that? Yeah, I can. You can set it up that it automatically goes out to clients as a bulk, okay? So you could do it once a year for your annual checkup. I send it out if I'm having a meeting with somebody and I haven't sent it out to them, and, and I kind of know there's a life change event, um, job change, things like that. You could send it out as often as you like. If you send out the bulk things, Unless they know about it, you're going to get a lot of phone calls because it comes through and it looks like it's spam only because if they're not familiar with Red Capture or Red Tail, they won't know what Red Tail is, you know. So you want to make sure that they're familiar with it. It's not that they're not going to you know, give you a problem. They just won't fill it out. So you could send it out to all your Red Tail clients in, in, in bulk. That's one of the options. Again, best practices, you're going to get a lot of phone calls. So just that's the only thing I would say to you. I do it one-on-one -on -one via email. I say, please fill out the link below because you know it's a little more personalized they know what's coming yeah definitely that's i think uh, colin that's one of the big advantages of having that white labeling being able to include that logo and stuff so they they right. can know they'll they'll recognize the logo know that's a trusted brand and and be more likely to fill that out and then again you can really do this during any time in the life cycle of the client whether that's you know they just became a lead they're now a prospect you know you're in that onboarding process like we talked about today or even just existing to update client information uh, one thing that I noticed that was really cool is when you updated your job title, it updated in real time in Redtail. So you went from an actor to an RIA firm uh, with just a refresh of, of Redtail, which was really awesome to see that happen in real time. No kind of major delay there waiting for that information to push through. It does well, it automatically. That ties into it's, you know, I mean, again, maybe I'm incorrect, but I think it's the only solution that actually uses your database. Um, you know, we have, again, a, a, we're pretty busy people, you know, advisors. Yes. And we have multiple databases and it gets a little overwhelming. So that's kind of why we developed this versus the other solutions. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's one of my favorite parts about Red Capture is kind of the story and how it came to be. And it, it, Colin, you had no intention of, of being a, a tech, you know, a, a software no. solution. Like you were just an advisor who saw a problem. You worked with some developers to solve it. And what happened was is you created a great product and, and, you know, you worked with Redtail to say, Hey guys, can we make this more available to everybody? And, and that's what we're doing here today. So uh, we really do appreciate your generosity and sharing this with the world. And then even to give it out, you know, for free till the end of 2020 is such an awesome opportunity. And so I hope those who are on the webinar here take advantage of that great opportunity, but uh, let's go to the next question. The next one comes from Lindsay. She asks, can a mobile phone be added when they add a number in their home? It, it does it duplicate the info into Redtail. So uh, she's, I think yeah. she's referring to those phone numbers and adding those from Red Cap yeah. and Redtail. Yeah. So the mobile number, when you, when you get the um, ID back from the computer, you know, when, you, when they get the text back from Red, Red Capture, that automatically goes right to the mobile number spot of a new client. So you wouldn't add, you don't need to add a mobile number because it's already added. So all the other phone numbers can be added, home, work. Mobile number is automatically added as the qualifier for the database. 
record. So if you have an existing client in there, you don't have a mobile number for them, it's not going to pull up that client. So you you know before you'd want to send it out, you want to make sure the mobile number is matching to their their current mobile number because it's going to create a new a new client. Got it. So to clarify, Colin, basically the mobile number that they initiate with, that's going to get added automatically. And then if they wanted to add a home number, you can make that a secondary yeah. question in the in the capture form. Exactly. All right. Awesome. Great. Next question comes from Michael. He wants to know a little bit more about the bank accounts and and, and maybe basically making those a required field or not. So um, when they add their bank accounts, does it forward into into Redtail? And, and uh, can you make it that does. mandatory? Yeah, just like the just like a driver's license, you, you can make it mandatory that they add their bank accounts. Um, I do not do that, but you can definitely do that um, if you choose to, and they can put their bank account information in, so you have it. It obviously doesn't go to their bank account; just the number that they put in. But the driver's license is kind of important to have for you know for a lot of the, the compliance things we need. All right, uh, Colin, we have a couple of questions about uh, just kind of privacy and, and access to data. Is is Red Capture keeping any of that data, or is that no, just, just going phone right number to and name? Or? Just the phone number and the name. I could, if if again, if if you, the best case, I have a whole fact sheet on that. I could just, if you email me, I'll shoot you that fact sheet. It's above my pay level of what it is. But we don't keep any social security numbers, any of that data. Um, as you see, it goes right into the database. We keep their name and their phone number just because that's the qualifier um, in, you know, in, in our back office, just so that we can tie into the directly into the red tail. But we don't keep social security number or anything else. Okay. Or, you know, it goes right into. But again, if you just reach out to me, I'll give you that that uh, fact sheet on the um, security. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, okay. Um, so just to reiterate a, a previously asked your question, this one comes from Trent. So Trent, about the bank accounts, if you request bank info, you can make it so that they can't continue into the form unless they enter in that bank event information, Correct. or you can make it an optional field. So I uh, just wanted to repeat that. Uh, so Trent, again, bank account information, it is option to make it mandatory, or you can make it unmandatory. Uh, but if you do make it mandatory, they won't be able to receive the capture form unless they fill it out. Yeah, my thought on that just is that it, it's just a number. Um, I mean, sometimes you do want their bank account number for setting up ACH and whatnot, but they're going to have to sign something later anyway, and you probably need to check. So it's really just for informational purposes. You know, you, they can put brokerage accounts as well there. The top brokerage accounts are there as well, just so if you want to put the information, they can do that as well. So you know where they have assets. It doesn't show what the assets are because it's just a number. They can make up the number. Cool. Thank you for that, Colin. Um, th this question comes from Mark. He wants to know about the texting capabilities. Would it be possible to send that, that red capture link out as a text or would it only be email only? Text would be, you could use a text. Okay. The link is, you know, it's not a problem. Yep. Great. And then just to recap, you do get notifications when via email, you can set it up so you get emails when people do fill out the red yeah. capture forms. Yeah, it, yeah, you get notified that somebody completed it, the, uh, you know, the client or the prospect's name completed your red tail or updated a red tail. Like I got email when I just did that, I get updated immediately that, you know, Colin updated his information in red capture. Um, it's occasionally a email thing where you don't get the email. Some, some, uh, sometimes that'll happen, but it's, it's extremely rare, but you know, 99% of the time you'll, you, you will get an email. All right. Awesome. Uh, this question comes from Heather. It's uh, about linking of, of households. So, for example, if you have on the red capture form information about husband and wife, are they going to be linked together in red tail or will that require a secondary linking process once the contacts are added? Yeah. Yeah. The husband and wife. Yes. It would be secondary. Okay. So you want them to each complete their own with their spouses, husband and wife, or, you know, whatever partners that way you'll get more data on them, job, employment, all that information, um, driver's license numbers, and then you can you'll have to link them. I, I kind of say to people, does 95% of what 95% of people want it to do? For for red tail, so, you know, it doesn't do everything for other services. It just is a red tail service. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, so Sarah wants to know. This is this is really just for gathering client data. There isn't any kind of document sending or signing capabilities with the road capture at this point. There is not. Okay, good good clarification there. Uh, Kevin asks about uh, another um, technology in the space, which is Precise FP. Do you want to speak to kind of some of the differences between 
you and Precise Sophia as far as like features and pricing goes? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I, I'll, I'll talk again from higher level. I don't want to get in the nuts and bolts of Precise FP. We looked at Precise FP. It's kind of what, when I first saw Precise FP, I said, wow, that's great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Then it became another database, and I, I didn't go forward with it because I don't want another database. Um, the, the, the cost, you know, again, is very expensive relative to what we offer, but, it, you know, we're, I don't think we're competing against Precise FP because I think if you want more databases, Precise FP is functional, but we don't want more database we want less databases. So for us, it's why we created Red Capture. Otherwise, we could have saved a lot of money and used Precise FP. But for time management and everything else, we wanted to really, you know, focus on what we had and what we liked. And that's kind of how Red Capture came to be. I think Precise FP for the right people does a great job for what they wanted to do. It might be more robust, but then again, it's another step in the in the, in the process, and that's not again, that's not what we wanted. So I I, I don't know a lot about Precise FP other than the, again the, from the overview. Um, I think a lot of people like it, they use it, but for us it wasn't what we wanted. Um, we wanted to focus on Redtail because you know you got to use technology to help and, and make yourself more efficient. So adding more layers of databases is, is not one way to do it. I don't think. Okay, awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna gonna kind of skim through some of these because we have lots of questions to get through today. Uh, so let's do just a reminder, uh, Nicola. If you need cybersecurity documents or information about what Red Capture does with data, feel free to go to redcapture.com, contact Colin, and he can get you the appropriate documentation that you can share with your compliance department about making Red Capture available to you and your team. And if you and also, if you just guys, if you just send an email and say security. On the subject, you don't have to type anything. I'll respond with the data. Okay. Just you heard it there first. So subject line security and Colin will know what to do with it. So, uh, all right. Uh, we have a question about, is there any kind of promo code that they need to enter to take advantage of that until the end of 2020 no. deal? Okay. No, it'll just, I, I, it's done by date and I know the dates. So it's just, it'll be free to the end of the year. All right. Sounds good. Um, See. Bridget asked about the fields that can be changed or customized. So Colin, do you know like a number of how many or, or is there any like maybe, how about this? Is there any fields in Redtail that you wouldn't be able to update using Red Capture? User-defined fields that each practice uses specific to that practice can be updated, but we don't support it because it's basically a limitless um, number of fields that we, and it goes to mapping and it gets kind of technical, but it becomes also very expensive to manage that um, on our end. So for, for now, we just, any user defined field, uh, any red tail fields are what's available um, to be used in red capture. So again, the easiest thing to do is just go on, it doesn't cost anything, play around with it, see if it fits your, you know, what you, what you guys are looking for. And, uh, See how it works for your for your practice. All right, awesome. So uh, this question comes from Echo. Echo wants to know if there's any kind of like customization questions that you can do outside of Redtail, or is this just specific to those Redtail fields? Um, so they want to know about like risk profiling yeah. questions and such. Yeah, the the risk. Yeah, I mean, I I think the, the going back to the answer, the previous answer, the it's the user, the fields that Redtail has is what it's tied into currently. I mean, the, the best case scenario is getting user, the more users we get, the more ability we'll have to go to Redtail and say, you know, the, the uh, risk tolerance questions, there's not enough selections, drop downs, increase that on Redtail's, because that we could support easy. So currently you could, you can add user defined fields. We just don't support it. So some will work, some won't work. And it has to do with how they're mapped and the, the type of um, words and coding you use in your user defined fields. Okay. Yeah, probably back, back, back to your last piece of advice would be just to try the trial, try it out and see if it's going to work for you. All right. Uh, there's a little bit of questions here, uh, kind of likely summed to, together um, as far as, uh, the security side of it. So when we send out that 
form to the client? Can they do, can the client trust that their information they're putting in there is secure? Is there any kind of like encryption level? Or, yeah, um, that's the that's the fact sheet. Yes. Yeah, it's it's again it's been vetted by a lot of BDs already, but I'll I'll send it to anybody who wants it. And again, it's above my pay level. I I couldn't explain it to you, so I don't want to try to. Um, but it is secure. All right, awesome. So be sure to reach out to Colin for that fact sheet, and uh, he'll go ahead and get that to you. Um, all right. So again, just going through. If you need broker dealer approval, reach out to Colin. Uh, Colin's information, contact information can be found at redcapture.com. Um, Colin, can you verify the pricing with us just one more time? A couple of questions here about yeah. pricing. Okay, so when you sign up, most people are going to be individuals. It's nine dollars a month. It's nine dollars a month. If you have over five users, it goes to twenty-nine dollars a month per corporate plan. So don't sign up as a corporate plan unless you're actually are, are a corporate group or a group of people that want to use it. You know, the the reality is if you're you have one if you're one rep and you have a sales assistant, you only need one user because you only have one database, even though you might have two red tail credentials, you really only need one, you know, the broker's database, you know, because it, it, it ties into the same thing. And the assistant can use that link. It's the same link. She can copy it on her um, and send it out just like, just like the rep could. So for individuals, it's $9 a month. If you have two individuals in an office, you have two brokers, it's $18 a month. And if you have over five, it goes to $29 a month. It, and then it's it's six dollars additional. So if you have ten, it's sixty dollars a month. All right, great. Um, so just just to thumb through some of these other ones since we've answered a couple of them already. Um, so the profile is entirely customizable. You get to choose what fields you want to ask about and which ones you want to require versus not require. Yes, you can definitely send this to new clients. Um, you do not need a promo code for extended trial period. So all you need to do is just go to the website, sign up, Colin will read the dates and be able to do that. Um, Colin, we did have an instance where there was one that signed up last week. Uh, would they still be good? Yeah, to I'll take care of it. Okay, so. Yeah, just send them an email. have them send me an email. I'll take care. I might've already taken care of it, but have them send me an email. All right, awesome. Um, let's see. Is there any way to attach files to the red capture form? Like for example, if they wanted to attach a photo of the driver's license or would it just be the driver's license information no. that we type in? No, because you know, it just, it, it feeds right into Redtail. Gotcha. It's not a thing. It's yeah. kind of just a mapping thing. It just, it's in the air. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay wants to know, so you showed that dependence box there and how you can add dependence. Does that also create a record for them in Redtail as well? If it you does. Dependence? Okay, great. It does. So again, if you don't, if you have, a, you know, the best practice thing, if you have a spouse, as a perfect example, you'd want them each to sign up separately and have one of them add the dependents because otherwise, you know, if the spouse is added as a dependent, it's going to show up twice if she adds later, you know, so because it wouldn't, it wouldn't let you put the mobile number in there. And if they're older kids that, you know, that are going to be clients, they can also fill their own out because they'll have, you know, if they're working kids and they're not really dependents, but they want to be under the same family, I'd have them sign up their own, click the link themselves and fill out the data. Great. Um, lots of requests here for the fact sheet. Um, it's very secure and, and uh, any broker dealer we sent it to had no problem with it. And we had to fill out a whole, you know, you got to fill out a lot for these vendor things at these broker dealers, you got to fill out a lot of data. And um, they asked for it annually, you know, which we do. And it's, 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 you know, Nobody's had a problem with it. All right. There was a question here about that field that you filled out, which was uh, time horizon, uh, the, the field that right. you use it. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead. I have a red cell database open here um, that we can share. So um, just so we can get some clarification of what that field is and where, where it's located in red tail. Yeah. So right now I'm on a contact record. This is James Halpert here. I am under the know your client section and then I chose financials. And so that time horizon here is this field right here. So when Colin was, was entering that information into Redtail, it was choosing between these three options here. So he chose short term, it's gonna update that field. So we can basically take this field here, that action that I just did, put it into Red Capture, 
as the ability uh, to, to basically update that field. And again, that's located on the contact record under the Know Your Client section and then the Financials tab. So uh, Angela, hopefully that answers your question. All right, um, just summing through some of these other questions here. Uh, Scott that's wants to a, awesome. That's a good. That, that's a good. Just uh, that's a pretty good example of why it's kind of a, a good tool for compliance. If you do send it out on your annual meetings, and you know that client changed to a short-term time horizon, it'll be in the client's note that the client did it and changed, or if it went long-term from short-term, so that if you change your investment philosophy based on that, and the client says, you know, why'd you change my investment philosophy? It's kind of documented that they 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 changed their time horizon. So. Good to have. Okay, great. Um, all right, so uh, Scott wants to know about uh, using, he has a financial planning tool that was a client portal. Do you think that Red Capture would be duplicating the data collection process or uh, would there be advantage of Scott using the, the financial planning software as well? Okay, not knowing what you have or how it works, um, the you know our service is essentially free. You know, it's nine dollars a month. It's, it's basically a lunch a, a month. It does free up your time from getting all this mundane information. It does create some compliance um, tracking, and you know it's, you know it saves you ten or fifteen minutes, and it also looks pretty professional instead of asking clients all this mundane information over the phone or having them fill out a piece of paper and typing it in yourself. So, it, you know, if, if if your financial planning software does it all and feeds it right into Redtail and that's your database and you don't have to do anything else, that that's, then it does the same thing, I guess. I just don't know what you use or how you do it, how functional it is. I could speak to that a little bit too, uh, Colin. So Scott, uh, Redtail integration capabilities, a lot of times you have the ability to push contact data from Redtail to the financial planning tool but sometimes it doesn't work in reverse. Again, there are exceptions to that. So like Colin said, it's really gonna depend on what financial planning tool that you're using. But I think a great workflow that you can utilize is to use Red Capture, capture the data there, have that information populate into Redtail, and then use Redtail to push that information into your financial planning tool. So if you like the look and the feel of Red Capture, the way that it works out, uh, then I would definitely recommend maybe using Red Capture, pushing it to Redtail again, and then using Redtail to push that information to your financial planning tool, create a profile for them there, uh, which I think would make a very easy, seamless workflow for you. Again, it's gonna depend on what your financial planning tool, how satisfied are you with that financial planning tool? Uh, what are the costs associated with that financial planning tool? But again, just a recommendation for you. So maybe yeah, something to one. consider. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of do that with our broker dealer. We take the red tailed data and push it into our broker dealer mm -hmm. for new accounts. And we have to type in, you know, three things that out of the 30 things, whatever it is, or 25 things that are, are not on red tail, but it, it's extremely efficient and saves a ton of time for us. Uh, Trista has a question about the, that phone number, that initial phone number that we enter in. So what if the phone number is the same for both spouses? Is it still gonna be okay for them to be able to do well, that? Go ahead. No, because they'll, get a, they'll, they'll have a conflict. So you, you could use email. But most spouses don't have, you know, most, you know, I, I don't know the number, but there's a high probability that most people have their own cell phones today. Yes. But yeah, it would be different. And, you know, if people don't have a cell phone or uh, email, because that happens too, because some people don't want it, then they're, they're, you're going to have to do it manually. So mm -hmm. those one offs are going to be, they exist, but they're rare. Okay. Um... So just to recap, uh, there is no ability to um, attach files. So for example, if you're gathering driver's license information, you're also going to want to maybe request that separately in email. Like perhaps maybe when you get an email letting you know that the red capture film has been filled out, that could be part of your workflow process to be go go back and, and to request you know a copy of the of the driver's Correct. license too. Correct. So Correct. Uh, you can't we don't we don't red red capture doesn't support uploads, so, so files or documents, mostly because they don't want to be responsible for storing that data. Uh, but if you need to do that, I would recommend perhaps making yourself a workflow process that has you reach out to request, you know, a physical or a paper copy of that driver's license. This red capture form here is only intended for you to be able to get that data point into the red tail contact record. Right, exactly. 
All right. It's, it's basically the best way to look at it is a client is actually typing their data right into Redtail. You know, mm -hmm. it's the mm -hmm. best way to look at it. It's just in a better looking form. Okay. Hey, Colin, can you uh, just let us know again, what was that email address that we would email to get that, sure. uh, that uh, fact sheet? Yeah. Well, if you go to the website, redtail uh, red, uh, redcapture.com, it's right, it'll be right there. You can just hit click an email. Okay. So email us, contact, contact us. us. Contact us at redcapture.com, everybody, if you need that fact sheet from Colin uh, to get yeah, this put, the broker dealer. Put security or, you know, whatever you want to put on the subject, I'll get it right to you. If you have other questions, just, you know, and if you need to talk to me, I'll, I'll just say I need to talk to you, put your phone number, and I'll call you back. Okay. Awesome. So, uh Again, Colin is not going to use this information to market to your clients or sell this information to your clients. None of the information gets stored in Red Capture. It all gets put into your specific Redtail database, which is secure by Redtail Security. Um, and if you want more information about that, contact Colin about that security. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800 206 5030 option three for support or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com thanks a lot and have a great day